It's that time of year when people begin thinking about burning off fields or southern pine stands. It's called control burning, some say prescribed burning. If you do it without following the law, though, you could be liable for any damages caused by an accidental wildfire. In our feature segment today, we visit Orby and Brenda Wright, a Lumberton, Mississippi couple who practice prescribed burning. Some find it hard to believe that fire is one of the tools that the Wrights use on their property. When we visited the Wrights in 2010 when a prescribed burn took place, it actually improves wildlife habitat in the southern pine ecosystem. We like the longleaf ecosystem and, and we've been in several programs that, that help us with that also to promote the gopher tortoise and, and it's great for uh, fox squirrels and quail and turkey and deer. Orby Wright and his wife Brenda bought the land in 1988 that would eventually become Quail Hollow Ranch. You wouldn't know it today, but the Wrights say the land was pretty well cut over and needed reforestation. The Wrights sought out public and private forestry expertise and developed a plan to restore the property. Fourteen years later, in 2002, they were the Mississippi Forestry Association's Outstanding Tree Farmers of the Year. The next year, they were the Southern Region Tree Farmers of the Year. In January 2010, they received the Wildlife Conservationist Award from the Mississippi Association of Conservation Districts. The Wrights love the outdoors so much, they burn it. It's important to remember that for hundreds of years, fire has been a, a part of the, the, the pine ecosystem in the southeast. Uh, it helped to control underbrush, uh, it helped to uh, promote native grasses and native forbs that are important for wildlife species. Uh, and, and helped also help to reduce wildfire risk. If you look uh, in, in the western part of the United States these days, in California and Montana and those type areas, you see that we're always having wildfires. And the primary reason is that is because we've taken fire out of the equation. Rush Walsh is the president of the Mississippi Prescribed Fire Council and the chairman of the Lamar County Soil and Water Conservation District. Walsh says the southern pine forest and its wildlife are adapted to fire. As long as the fire stays out of the treetops, southern pines can take the heat. The fire also clears out the understory, creating anew the habitat that the animals of the southern pine ecosystem need. Fire just starts the, the process of, of plant succession over. We reduce the, the woody growth and the, the hardwood competition. Um, we reduce all the dead grasses. Uh, so right after a burn for the summer, several uh, summers after the burn, um, we have all of these lush plants coming back, all these native grasses and all of these um, broadleaf weeds that are going to provide food sources and cover. The proper use of fire in pine timber and wildlife management is called prescribed burning. As the name implies, it's not done indiscriminately. It's planned for the given area to be burned. A person certified in prescribed burning creates the prescription. The certified prescribed burn managers have gone through uh, the burning short course uh, in Mississippi. And these, they learn about weather patterns, they learn about uh, firing techniques, they learn about fuel loads and fuel conditions and, and right burning conditions. They know all of the, the pieces uh, to the puzzle of a prescribed burning. To legally conduct a prescribed burn in Mississippi, you must have a notarized burn plan for the site. A certified prescribed burn manager must be on site during the burn. You must secure a burn permit from the Mississippi Forestry Commission on the day of the prescribed burn. There are advantages to following the law. By using a certified prescribed burn manager, you have an experienced person who knows how to conduct a prescribed burn where it won't get out of control. Following the law also gives you legal protection. If you have followed the letter of the law, which means you had your burn plan, burn manager on site, got a burn permit, then um, if a fire gets out and, and causes damage to a neighboring property, then they have to prove negligence, that you were negligent on your part. And if you followed all those steps, it's going to be very hard um, for them to prove that negligence. The rights conduct prescribed burns every year, but they do not burn every acre every year. Longleaf typically, this we burn every other year, at least we try to. And then, of course, we rotate different areas and leave some un unburned areas for nesting for turkeys and quail. As, as fires move through here, they're not just going to be in that stand and get burned up. They're going to move out, but they've, all, they've got cover to go to because uh, we haven't burned all of the property at one time. They've got cover to move to. So wildlife are very uh, resistant to prescribed fire and, and also very adapted. Just as I went up the house a while ago is bringing the water back, there was four fox squirrels in the front yard. Just, you know, you just 
you have geese in the back and I saw two big turkeys walk across the yard this morning and you know you just that's just something that that not everybody you just can't have without working at it. Prescribed burning is not done simply by getting on the upwind side of a track and allowing the fire to sweep across the entire track at one time. Torches are used to set fire to small strips, working from the downwind edge of the track to the upwind side. This keeps the fire manageable out of the treetops and it's much less likely to jump the fire lanes. Smoke is one of the biggest concerns in prescribed burning. Weather conditions must allow it to rise into the sky. Smoke that stays on the ground could create dangerous driving conditions on nearby roads. The biggest factor that we face with, with burning today is smoke, We're smoking in highways and, and residential neighborhoods, and that's where uh, that, that burn permit really comes in and says, hey, smoke is allowed to disperse well today. Gary Blair, South Area Vice President with the Mississippi Association of Conservation Districts says the rights were deserving of the MACD's Wildlife Conservationists of the Year Award. They're involved in reestablishing the gopher tortoise on their property. Blair says the rights have also assisted the Lamar County Soil and Water Conservation District by hosting education events for landowners and youth. The property has been a training site for the MACD-sponsored Envirothon competition. A lot of our programs now are geared toward education. I would say that's our largest component is educating not only the public and the farmers and the landowners, but also our young people, our students. Uh, we do a lot of our programs are geared toward our young people and getting them aware of what conservation practices are and what things that they can do uh, to assist the, uh, the natural resources that, the God, that God has given us. Using poplar lumber salvaged after Hurricane Katrina swept through their property, the Wrights have built a creekside pavilion. That's something that, that we wanted to do, and it gives us an opportunity to, to have a place so that we can have the school kids come in, and we have field days down here and things like that. It's just a, it's, it's an ideal spot rather than in a more residential kind of setting. Brenda Wright says getting young people interested and knowledgeable about conservation is vital. Well, if the young people aren't interested and don't learn about it, it ends with, you know, these generations. But uh, most young people, given the opportunity, they love the outdoors. And if you're interested in watching this story again, you can go to our website, farmweek.msucarious.com. You can also go to our Facebook page. We will have telephone numbers and links to a variety of agencies where you can get additional information on prescribed burning. So that's farmweek.msucarious.com. And Leighton, the one thing to, to keep in mind is it's good to have somebody there that does know about prescribed burning. They can say, hey, it's the, the wind's too high. The wind can be too low as well because you want the smoke to disperse. So when you have somebody that's experienced there, once again, as Russ mentioned in there, your liability is lessened because they have to prove that you didn't obey the prescribed mm. There's burning. a lot more to it than There's it a lot appears. more to it, but mm. then you get good results. I know in case, my brother's and I's case, our family's land in Smith County, we had to wait two years to get it burned because the wind uh, was going towards chicken houses and we obviously we didn't want the smoke going towards chicken houses. So that's why having experience is helpful.